give you the basis for credibility. We don't spend a lot, a lot of time on it. We just pretty much go through things that you've already visited. We just enhance them just a little bit. Okay. So the one thing we talk about is permutation. The difference between permutations and combinations is the fact that order matters. It matters how you line things up. It matters what order they come in, what comes first, what comes second. Um, you can also do permutations in your calculator. You can do permutations like this, like if I have five things to line up, five, four, three, two, one, factorial sometimes, if it's going to be all of them. If it's only, like say I have, um, I have 15 kids in this class, I need to send three down to be a president, a vice president, and a secretary. So in that case, my order matters. I can do it like this. I have three, president, vice president, secretary. 15 choices for the first one. 14 choices for the second one. 13 choices for the third one. And I multiply. Or 15 P3. Remember doing the permutation? Yes, no, maybe so. Okay, order matters. It matters who I send through as president, who I send through as vice president. Okay, there's more permutations than there are combinations, of course. And we'll get to combinations. A lot of times they say arrangements. And the reason why they say arrangements is because sometimes they give you a word. And they say, how many different arrangements can I make from these letters? Yeah, obviously, if I write this, this is not a word. It's an arrangement. So we, we, that's why they use the word arrangement. Usually you see different in there, but we also see different when it comes to combination. So they'll use that same word. Um, but this is where your order matters. Let's take a look at some of their examples. This was a pretty cool example. Oh, I am on page 168. They kind of, uh, with this new book, with my second year with this new book, I like it because it, it gives you more things that you would use or you could relate to. The object of a 9 by 9 Sudoku number is to fill the grid. Oh, they, gave you, they gave you an example on 168 if, you, if you've never played Sudoku before. Is to fill the grid so that each row, each row down, each row across, and each row down, each column down, has the numbers 1 through 9 in it and no repeats. And each box of 3 by 3 contains the numbers 1 through 9. So if you look at the side of page 168, that's the Sudoku puzzle. How many of you have never played Sudoku? One, two, couple. So it's, it's a kind of a fun numbers game. And start with the easy ones and you get the hang of it real quickly. How many different ways can the first row, so what I'm looking at is this, I've got nine pieces, I've got nine pieces to go through here, how many different ways can we put the numbers one through nine? And we say order matters. I can put a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, six, all the way up to nine. So you have a number of ways to do it. You can do all nine spots when, when you forget how to do this. All nine spots. I have nine choices for the first one. I put a one there. I have eight choices left. Then seven, then six, five, four, three, two, one. Your counting principle says you're going to multiply these guys together. It's a heck of a lot of different ways you can do this. You can do, because you used all the groups, all the numbers, you can do nine factorial. Your calculator does factorial 
under math, all of, all of your probabilities are under math. Scroll to probability. Factorial is the one with the exclamation point. You could do nine things, taken nine at a time. Three different ways to do that. Okay. So order makes a difference here. Um, the women's hockey team that qualified for the 2014 Olympics are Canada, Finland, Germany, Japan, Russia, Sweden, Switzerland, and the United States. How many teams qualified? Eight. So how many different final standings are possible? Don't, don't they all have to be included? So one through eight? So again, this is the best way when you forget how to do this. I have eight choices, then seven, then six, then five, four, three, two, one. I have eight factorials. I have eight things taken eight at a time. What if I said this? I have eight teams that qualify, but I'm only going to place the top three. I want a gold, a silver, and a bronze. How many different final standings can I make now? How would I set this up? Good. I have three places to, to place them in. And Michael said eight. I have eight choices for the first one, then seven, then six. Just multiply those. You can't do factorial because it doesn't go down to one. How would I set up my permutation? Eight things, and how many places? Three. Okay, it matters who comes first. Question? No? I thought you were raising your hand. Okay. Permutations are the easy guys. Okay. Technically, this is their formula for permutation. So if I take eight things, three at a time, they say eight factorial, over n, n is the 8, minus r, 3, so 8, minus 3, 5 factorial. This is what you get. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. It leaves you for the first 3. So an easier way to do their formula is what we just did. 8 things 3 at a time just makes 3 lines. 8, Seven, six. These are going to cancel out. So yes, that's their formula, and I don't know why they make it so difficult. I guess they want you to see it. But it's as easy as just making the three lines. Three lines. That's all you need. Well, whatever this number happens to be. That's how many lines you make. Okay, find the number of ways of forming four-digit code when no digit is repeated. How many digits do you have? to choose them. You, well, you need to make four. How many digits for each one of these guys? Ten. Zero through nine gives us ten digits. And no digit is repeated. So what goes in the first place? Ten, nine, eight, seven. And you multiply. How would I write it with a page? 10 P, 4. 10 things taken four at a time. Okay. Everybody kind of seeing this? Yeah, you can multiply their very large numbers. And be careful, sometimes when you put the really large numbers in your calculator, it flips it to a scientific notation number, depending on how many zeros you have. So if you have something that has a lot of zeros out there, it's going to give you something with an E in it. If it's a positive number, E to the 7 or 6 or whatever, that decimal gets moved to the right. And it would make sense to you when you see when you see that. Only usually if they just have a lot of zeros in there. And sometimes we do. So you guys try this. A psychologist shows a list of eight activities to a subject in an experiment. How many ways can the subject pick a first, a second, and a third activity? How many different ways can he assign those three activities, in other words? 
Put it in your pouch. Give me a number this time. No, make sure you're tight. And then put have a presentation at the same time. Have an answer? 336. So, Marissa, how'd you get it? Okay. Three things I want. I'll put them in three different places. Eight times seven times six. Anybody write a permutation statement? Eight. D. Three. It's under math. Scroll all the way to the right under probability. If you're going to put this in, you have to put the 8 first, then you got to do the NPR, then you got to put the 3. Oh. Then the factorial, you have to put the number down, and then go put the ex exclamation mark down. Okay, we're still on permutation. 43 race cars started the 2013 Daytona 500. How many ways can the cars finish first, second, and third? So how would I set this up? Three places. Start with your three places. My permutation would read what? Great. It's a lot, a lot of different ways for 43 cars to finish, right? Did you calculate that number? Calculate that number. That's got to be a very big number. 74,046 weights. A very large number of different weights to finish first, second, and third. Okay. Okay, so a board of directors has a company that has 12 members. One member is selected as president, one for vice president, one for secretary, one for treasurer. How many ways can these positions be assigned? Give me a P statement. 12 P, 4. 12, 11, 10, 9. So we all seeing this? Okay, good. They give you enough uh, permutations that you can kind of get it, the hang of it. Okay, here's the one that's a little different. Distinguishable permutation. Ordering a group of objects when some of the objects repeat. So here's the situation. You have to take out the duplicate. If I have the word pool, and I want to make arrangements, four letter arrangements, Arrangement. That's my word arrangement. If I had this, um, whole, I can take them and go four times three times two times one. Twenty-four different ways to arrange those letters. If I do this, what's the difference between this and this? This is one way. This is my second way. My O's block. I changed my O's, but they're the same arrangement, right? So these are what they call distinguishable permutations. We can't allow this one, even though, yeah, I did switch my O's. It's the same arrangement. So when we do this, we have to, on the bottom, take out the duplicate. So the top is going to be the same. Four things, four at a time, four P4, four, four, three, two, one, whatever you want to write in your numerator. But the bottom says, the one that duplicates here is the O's. I have two of them. Take them out. 
in February. Because they can't say C-O-O-L, C-O-O-L, C-O-L-O, C-O-L-O. I got to take out my duplicate. So this is where your duplicates come out. So this is 4, 3, 2, 1, over 2, 1. You have 12 ways now for this particular case. So do you see what we had to do? We couldn't swap your O's. They would make a duplicate word. Arrangement. Let's call them arrangement. Because they're technically not words. Okay. And it works with other things besides letters. A building contractor is planning to develop a subdivision. The subdivision is to consist of six one-story houses, four two-story houses, and two split-level houses. How many distinguishable ways can the houses be arranged? In other words, he's planning a new development. He's going to have six one-story houses. He's going to have four two-story houses and two split-level houses. He can put one, one, one next to each other, but he can't do the same thing again because they won't be distinguishable. So he can figure out how many houses he has to choose from, 12 houses to choose from, and he has to take out the duplicate. So 12 factorial over what? I gotta take out the duplicate. How many of these things repeated? How many one story houses repeated? Actually, we still count the first. We count them all. Six. How many two-story houses repeated? Four. And how many split levels repeated? God bless you. Two. God bless you. Now, when you put this in your calculator, if you don't use the fraction bar, this has to go in parentheses. And you're going to be left with not too many distinguishable ways. Yes. Oh, okay, so let's break this down. Let's make it real small. I have two one-story houses. I have two, um, let's just make this two uh, uh, two-story houses. Okay, so here's my one-story house. Here's my two-story house. I want to know how many different distinguishable ways I can do this. So if I do this, and this again, Even though I swapped out my two-story houses, they look exactly the same, right? I still have to take out the distinguishable one. When, when you take out the original one, it's like it counts the first one. It's like dividing by one. So what they're saying is this. If I do this, there's not a lot of different ways you can do this because this counts twice. I can't count this. But my first one goes in as the one. And you'll get a nice little answer with this guy. So this would feed you a whole lot to choose from because of this guy. So 13,860 distinguishable ways. So if you were this contractor, and you have to put these trees in, or these houses in, these houses that set these houses up, you really have to give this a lot of thought because the house is repeat. You don't want like all of them together, all the split levels, all the two stories, all the one stories together. You have to really spread them around and you don't want the same pattern to repeat. So there's many, many, many different ways to set those up. On a small level, I think it's easier to see. Okay, so you guys try this one. They do the same thing with trees. Two. How many? Seven point zero four zero ten ten two thirteen. I think that's a little bit too many. I did twenty factorial divided by six factorial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, twenty factorial. Divide by in parentheses six factorial four factorial. Why four? Oh, uh, maybe the last numbers. Yeah. Oh, okay. Nine factorial. Five factorial. So it should be what? Yeah, you can still pull it down and then go over it. Mm -hmm. 
Does everybody get that? 77,597,000. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of different ways to set up those trees, isn't it? And, and still make them look different, different ways. Are you okay with the permutations? Okay, permutations work a little bit different. All right, so for number seven. With me, guys? Everybody can find this in your calculator? Number seven? Okay. All right, and then I gave you number 15. The number of ways a car can uh, line up in a row is called a permutation. Number 22, the starting lineup for your baseball team consists of 10 players. How many different batting orders are possible? I bet you never thought there would be this many. So when your coach is sitting there trying to figure out the batting order with 10 players, okay, there's a whole lot of different ways you can set up that batting lineup. There are 50 runners in a race. How many runners can finish first, second, and third? So if you even place in the top 10, figure it out. Do your probabilities. What your probabilities are of even placing in the top 10. So this is the top three, first, second, and third. There's a lot, a lot of permutations. An archaeology club has 38 members. How many different ways? And this is typical of how they'll ask it. How many different ways? Sometimes, though, we do see, in, in computations, we do see them ask different ways as well. Can a club select a president, a vice president, and a treasurer? It's a heck of a lot of different ways to select those four people. I bet you, uh, honestly, did you think those probabilities would be that high? I didn't. Yeah. E even in this group, what do we have, like 20, 20 something kids in here, 20 kids? They would have 20 kids. If I need to make a president and a vice president, that's what, 380? Yeah. Right? That's a heck of a lot of ways, isn't it? A heck of a lot of ways to select a president and a vice president to set a 20 kids. Okay. Um, here's, a, here's a good one, too. You're putting, you're making a charm bracelet. You have 10 charms. Eight silver, eight ten sorry, ten gold, eight silver, and you have four spacers. In how many different distinguishable ways can you use the spacers and the charm? Okay, you got to take out the duplicate. Um, it's just still look at how many different ways. Three hundred and twenty million different ways to, to create that bracelet. Okay, a heck of a lot of ways. Are we okay with the permutation? I like to kind of keep. <laughs> I've been seeing a few phones lately, guys. 